Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Movies with Mia. If you're new to the channel, hi! I'm Mia Tiffany, and here we're watching the greatest classic films throughout history. Today, we are continuing our Noir Vember series by watching the film Scarlet Street. First things first, I'd like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your continued support of the channel. And if you're interested in exclusive MWM content, then please check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. Scarlet Street was released in 1945, directed by the great Fritz Lang, not Fritz Lang, Fritz Lang, starring Edward G. Robinson and Joan Bennett, with other notable performances by Dan Duryea, Jess Barker, Margaret Lindsay, Rosalind Ivan, and Samuel S. Hines. All right, guys, at this point, we're going to get into some historical context. For those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. Scarlet Street was based off of the one-act French play La Chienne, written by Georges de la Fouchardier. Hopefully I said that correctly. Sometime in the 1900s. Now the play was adapted for the screen first in 1931, directed by Jean Renoir. And it was under the same name. So it was the, the movie is called La Chienne, which actually, fun fact, La Chienne in French means the female dog or the by this point in the 1940s, director Fritz Lang had established a successful career in Hollywood after fleeing Germany in 1933. Which, by the way, his story on how he sort of left Germany for good is a very interesting one, and I highly recommend you check that out in your free time, because it is a very interesting story. Now, he had just completed another film starring Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea one year prior, titled The Lady in the Window. So the transition to this new project was basically second nature. And also, both films have equally similar thematic themes. Thematic themes? <laughs> it was a bit monotonous, specifically to Robinson, who felt that he, he was already not too keen on filming The Woman in the Window. So then going from The Woman in the Window to then having to do Scarlet Street and it's the same sort of themes, I can only imagine he probably was just like, Ugh this again. <laughs> now, in my research, I actually couldn't find much more on the physical process of the production, but I did read that the film, once it was released to audiences, was met with mixed reviews from critics, specifically, ranging from neutral praise to scathing disdain. So they were really kind of mixed about how they felt about this film. However, since its initial release, Scarlet Street has been a favorite of the classic film noir fans, being arguably one of the trailblazers of its genre. And I say arguably in bold because that is up for debate, of course. With that being said, this is my first time watching Scarlet Street and I am so excited to get into it. But before we do, guys, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. <laughs> All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let's get in to Scarlet Street. Oh, and I wanted to tell you guys, I have been listening to your feedback. I am in the process of getting like an actual big screen. So hopefully sometime in the future, I can actually watch it on a big, bigger screen. Just want to let you guys know that. The camera kind of pans down. That's kind of cool. It's going at a slant. Okay. Well, boys, I hate to break up a good party, but you can't keep a woman waiting, can you? You know how it is. <laughs> you can't keep a woman waiting, can you? I've had the time of my life tonight. I have here 14 carat 17 jewel timepiece. The man I'm giving it to is a 14 carat 17 jewel cashier. Okay. Oh, there he is. This? Edward G. Robinson. What a great, what a great name, too, for an actor. To my friend Christopher Cross, 25 years of faithful service. Speak up, Chris. Speak up. Speak, speak. Come on, Chris. I, I never expected to own a watch like this. All I can say is that uh, we've got the best boss in New York. Why is it that I see that timepiece in gold? Even though it's in black and white, like my brain is registering it as like a gold timepiece. That's funny. Thank you, my old friend. God bless you. Thank you. Good night, boys. Good night. Good night, sir. Have a good night. Hurry. What happened? What happened? What happened? Get a load of that damn. Oh, oh, we're looking at the woman, not the monkey. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> the boss is not stepping out. <laughs> the boss is having some fun with his dame tonight. Nothing like the smell of spring. Well, I guess I'll take the east side subway. 
Gets me to Brooklyn a little quicker. You suppose J.J. is running around with that young lady? I, I, I wonder what it's like to be loved by a young girl like that. You know, nobody ever looked at me like that. Oh. You know, I dreamt I was going to be a great painter someday. Well, it's kind of sad that he's never had a woman, like, look at him in a way, in a desirable way. Kind of opens up his character, too, as to what his motives and desires might be going forward in the film. Oh, stop raining. Yeah, a half hour ago. So, uh, which way is it to the east side subway? Round the corner. Oh. Oh, my God. He's assaulting her. Get him. Get him. Is he hurt? Are I'll go call hurt? a policeman. No, wait. Walter. They're going to be gone. Oh, he's gone. Where'd they go? In that direction. Mm. What does he look like? I don't know. That doesn't seem right, because she was looking in the opposite direction. That's right, officer. He was right there. Wait here. I don't want to get my name in the newspaper. Do you? Well, here's where I live. Thanks for everything. Don't you, uh... Uh, don't you want a cup of coffee? All right. Oh, he wants to spend time with her. <laughs> She's like, sure, I guess. Uh, two coffees, please. Oh, I think I'll change my mind. I could stand a drink. A rum Collins. Oh, come on. Keeps me company. I've already had a good deal of champagne. You want champagne? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, she could wrap him around her finger. I can see it. This could be dangerous. What do your friends Danny's call kidding. you? Uh, Chris. Chris. Chris Cross. Chris Cross. Cross. <laughs> he seems like such a sweet guy. Oh my God. He's about to get scammed. I can feel it. He's too nice. He's too nice. Why are you looking at him? It's beautiful. Oh, I bet it is. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. For hers, there's kind of more shadow on her face, which makes me feel like she's two-faced. Cheers, Chris. But that is very Hitchcockian, so <laughs> I don't want to go there. Well, uh, look, uh, Kitty, since I'm old enough to be your father... I like mature people. You shouldn't be alone in the street so late at night. You work this late? Mm-hmm. Greenwich Village is full of artists. You must be an artist, right? Yes, yes, I, I paint. Of course, you're a painter. I love paintings. I kind of like how this dialogue is sort of... It, it's, it's setting up the idea of him not living in his own reality, living in a sort of manipulated reality that she has created through her dialogue. Uh, I, I, I don't sell my pictures. <laughs> I bet you get as much for your pictures in France as those Frenchmen get right here in New York. Mm -hmm. And you're never appreciated in your own country. And he's just gonna live in that delusion, baby. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a painter. I paint. I wish I had all the time to paint. But don't you have time? Oh, no. Uh, well, you, yes. Uh, you see, I, uh, business takes a lot of time. No mm. wonder when you get all that money. Uh, now she thinks that he has money. <laughs> play are you acting in? It closed tonight. Which one? The one I was in. What time is it? She's not revealing too much about herself either. It's only ten past two. Only? Oh, it's time for Kitty to be in bed. Can I see you again? Oh, sure, sometime. Good night, Chris. Kitty. Good night, Chris. Who's Johnny? Why do you ask that? Don't well, ask Well, I, I just heard you ask the bartender. It's uh, Millie's boyfriend. You know, the girl I live with. Good night, Chris. Good night, Kitty. Chris, don't live in that delusion, bro. It does not end up good. Don't do it. Getting into any sort of relationship, keep your mind fresh. Because you can fall so deep into the delusion. He's found his muse. Oh, he's painting. The That's kind of cute. Christopher! Christopher! Yes, Adele. Who's Adele? Housekeeper? Wife? Well, this is a pleasure. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you, Charlie. But, Chris, you asked me. Oh, he's married. What? Say, uh, what time would we go home? Uh, after midnight, wasn't it? Oh my god, so he's married, messing around with this kitty character. That is so messy. And did you paint this? Great Scott, no. Who is it? The uh, late departed. Oh, late your de wife's former husband. So Adele had been married before. Interesting. Jumped in to save a woman. Neither body was found. Oh. Huh. So he died, drowned, drowning, trying to save a woman. Uh, would you like to see what I did today? Yes, I'd like to. Oh my. That is not what I was expecting. Where did you find a, a flower like that? Oh my. Is this Johnny? What's his name? The other man he was referring to? Can't you get those lazy legs off that couch, baby? Come here. Oh my. So she is definitely in a relationship, albeit maybe toxic. I'm not talking about Saturday night. 
I'm talking about this. Sounds like a schoolboy trying to make a date. It's you a must be letter. robbing the cradle. That's the old fellow who came to my rescue Saturday night. My hero. You were too tight to remember anything. If I hadn't told the cop to go in the wrong direction, he'd have picked you up. He's rich and famous and very sweet too, Johnny. Maybe this could this could scam them too. But for cat's sake, this chump is crazy about you. He's in the big money, isn't he? You said no. fifty thousand a picture. Write him. So Data extort him. Oh, I can't take for money his money. An old man like that. You gotta have money to make money. Capital. For the boys at the Acme Garage are cut me in on a half interest if I can put up the money. You get an interest in a business like that, and it's a cinch to squeeze out your partners. I like the sing-song nature of the dialogue. Well, I won't be wasting my time. Johnny. Johnny. I'm already upset. I don't want them to, to take advantage of this man. He's just a guy who wants to be desired and be an artist. May I come into my own apartment? Picking on my fiancé. Fiancé? Has he bought you that engagement ring yet? Oh, you seem to worry more about it than I do. The new $45 model. Oh, Rogers, let me have it for 18. Why don't you go back to work? That figure, if you weren't so darn lazy. You never could get to work on time after you met that Johnny. I'm in love, crazy in love. But there's only one I want. Yeah, and he's making a tramp out of you. You wouldn't know love if it hit you in the face. If that's where it hits you, you ought to know. Okay, so they're basically going to extort this man for his money that he actually doesn't have because he's not actually rich, right? Oh my god. I don't want to see this. He seems like such a nice man. Hey, look, there's a pair of them up there. They're building their nest. She's like, wow. Hey, where'd you learn that? Oh, yeah, I bet I haven't done that in 40 years. Yeah, I feel like a kid myself today. Oh, he feels like it's restoring his youth and his... Excitement for his dreams. How long does it take you to paint a picture? Well, uh, sometimes a day, sometimes a year. You can't tell it. It's like, uh, uh, it's like falling in love, I guess. That's interesting. Well, the way I look at things, that's all art is. The truth is, I'm in a jam. You, Kitty? Oh, you probably guessed it. I'm broke. Even this dress belongs to Millie. I shouldn't have told you. I couldn't take anything from you, Chris. No. Uh, yes, I, I mean... No, no, I couldn't. I couldn't pay you back. Oh. If you put up the money for a studio apartment, then I'd have a place to live and you could paint there. You could paint my portrait. Something about that just doesn't feel right. Like, clearly, it's for the wrong reasons, but it just feels wrong. There's something I've got to tell you, Kitty. What? I lied. Oh, he's... Okay, he's not letting himself... I'm a married man, Kitty. Live in the delusion. You're married. You know I'm not the kind of girl to run around with a married man, don't you? I'm going to let you help me. How much do you need? $500. He's like, I don't have $500. He's going to pawn that freaking, that watch for her, man. What is he doing? Is he stealing? Christova, what are you doing, buddy? Oh, he's going to put it back. He's going to put it back. He's going to put it back. Put it back, baby. Put it back. Good job, buddy. You're not a bad guy. Don't do this for this woman. She's not good. I need $500. I could pay it back $10 a week. Property owner? Just a formality. Uh -uh. Thank you very much. Any time. I have to run downstairs every night to listen to the radio. And you wasting money on paints. See, but here's the other thing, which is a side side thing. Why would you get married to someone? I like Even if you're alone and you're in your loneliness, why would you marry someone that you're not like in love with or like feeling or even have like a cordial like relationship with? Well, really, you should marry for love. But that's just my opinion. But like, why would you marry someone that like makes you feel unhappy, you know, and, and even more lonely? That doesn't make any sense. I had to put the words into your mouth. See? I've been better off a widow. Have you been drinking? No, I haven't. Let me smell your breath. <sighs> no. Then what's the matter with you? Would you think I like running downstairs every night to listen to the radio? Well, why don't you buy a radio? You have money. He made a good salary. Oh, my God. I'd rather just be alone at that point. If you don't get rid of that trash, I swear I'll give it to the junk man. I swear I will. <laughs> and the things you paint. Next thing you'll be painting women without clothes. I never saw a woman <laughs> without any clothes. I should hope not. Go ahead and eat. And then do the dishes. Ew, it's like, it's like he's her servant more than her husband. Christopher! What are you doing? I was looking for the paper. A blind? Oh, didn't you like the radio? It went off right in the middle of a program. I wouldn't have such a radio. A man killed his wife with a window weight. 
put a body in the trunk and shipped it to California. He didn't get away with it, did he? He'll go to the chair, as he should. Man hasn't got a chance with these New York detectives. <laughs> Can't you put that paper down and do the dishes? You didn't mean what you said about giving my paintings away to the junk man. You'll find out. Uh, you heard of Tony Rivera, the illustrator? He had this apartment on a three-year lease. That's a studio? What? The sketches on the wall are Rivera's. He'd do that with his models sometimes when he was working on a magazine cover. Where's the bedroom? Oh, this way. What's the rent, Mr. Jones? Uh, 150. 150 a month? I wonder what the conversion is there for uh, to account for inflation. And this Johnny guy, I don't know why he annoys me. He's barely said like three things. But I just I just want to slap him and I don't know why. <laughs> Well, don't break the bag. Hello, lazy legs. Say, is this all you've got? I'm lucky I have that left the way you were throwing it around last night. Oh my God, their relationship is disgusting. I don't like anything about the, their dynamic at all. Say, that's all I have left. You know where to get more, don't you, lazy legs? Also, yeah, she's totally able to get a job. She should just get a job. What is she doing? I need at least a thousand dollars. Listen, baby, you got him right where you want him. He's on the hook and can't get off. Just drop a hint that his wife might find out about this apartment he'll shell out fast. That's blackmail. Is that him? I told you I heard the doorbell. <laughs> Nothing about them feels right. It all just feels gross. Don't you answer doorbells? Thought you were mad at me. Peace offering. Scotch. Thanks, honey. You're doing all right for a working girl. Don't start that again. You have a man over. Don't tell me he's under the sofa, too. No, bright eyes. All you have to do is call, funny face. Oh. Last time I saw Johnny, he was talking about going to Hollywood. I might try it yet. Why hear a movie actor's getting five, ten thousand a week for acting tough? What do they do I can't do? You're so clever, why don't you do it? I might. Though I still find it amusing in movies when, like, actors are meant to say something about the industry it's it's just kind of funny because it's like but you are also an actor in the industry probably experiencing this too like that there's just something funny about that totally random but i just love that chris i it's brought chris. over some of my things kitty i'll bring some more tomorrow you have company We're just millie and johnny sure you know millie's boyfriend come on i want you to meet them. millie this is a friend of mine mr cross miss ray glad to know you mr cross I remember you. How do you do? I've seen you before somewhere. Could be. Maybe I'm mistaken. Could be. Well, I wouldn't think of letting you go alone, darling. You might get run over by a streetcar. Ooh, he's just slimy. He's gross. Now, what's the matter, Chris? Uh, I, I don't think I like that young man she's in love with. There's something about him that... Well, she's crazy about him. You happy? For the first time in my life, all I want is to see you, be near you. Hmm. If I had no wife. But you have a wife. Yes, I know. But if she'd, uh, something would happen that would make me free. What, what do you mean by that, sir? Would you marry me? Oh, let's not talk about it now, dear. I'm sorry. Was he alluding to the, uh, to the fact of possibly, like, doing something to his wife to get rid of her? Because, whoa, what a change. Well, uh, I'll, I'll get you the money uh, some way. Chris, you're a darling. I really believe you're in love with me. I am, Kitty. I am. She is a femme fatale. Oh, he's... She's like, ew, don't <sighs> kiss me. I'll come here tomorrow noon, Kitty. I'll be waiting for you. I'm sorry you have to go. Bye-bye, dear. Are you sure he's not a phony? Ah, uh, and how would he get all the money? Why, if he had to work for a living, he couldn't make $50 a week. I kind of like this. Yeah, I like the flower. That's kind of cool. It's growing on me. I wonder if I couldn't sell these. He tried to kiss me today. And don't think I liked it. Oh, you've been kissed before. I hate him when he looks at me like that. If he were mean or vicious or if he'd bawl me out or something, I'd like him better. Oh, you don't love me or you'd understand what I mean. Oh, honey. He's gonna get caught. Just caught you in time. Cash this for me, will you, Chris? It's personal. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she is. Oh, but he would never suspect Chris because Chris would never do anything crazy like that. He's ruining everything for this woman. The fella that painted those gets 50 grand for a single picture. Hey, what's the matter with you, Nick? The village long hairs are peddling junk like that for the price of the canvas. These weren't painted by any village long hair. That's my pawn shop, isn't it? Take this junk back to Washington Square where you got it. So he can't sell the paintings, so they're worthless. I can see you've got an eye for art. That's one of my best. Take a look at these. Are they any good? Well, look at my painting. How much do you think they're worth? I always start everything at 25. Then, yeah, people don't buy art nowadays. Let me have your name and address. I'll come back later. You've been telling me what a dope the old guy is. He tells you his paintings are worth a lot of money. What's wrong with it? They're worth just 25 bucks a piece. If I weren't a gentleman. Well, don't get sore. Gentleman? Well, don't tell me I'm crazy. Please. His money isn't phony, is it? He could borrow dough or have it stashed away. The day he took me to the museum, he explained how everything was done. You should have heard him. People stood around and listened. What museum? The Metropolitan. Yipe. They've got pictures there worth a million bucks. Are those eggs? I'm gonna make a monkey out of you, lazy legs. You can't take his pictures to the museum. Who says I can't? Also, all of this would be completely unnecessary if, first of all, Kitty got a job. Also, if Johnny wasn't a freaking gambler. Oh my God, it's so infuriating. A Damon Janeway. Don't you know who Mr. Janeway is? Uh-uh. He's an art critic. Oh, so he took one look and bought them both. Oh, wow. I couldn't even give him my pictures, not for nothing. He told me to telephone him. You wait here, huh? No, no. You're the Mr. Fixit who was gonna make a monkey out of poor dopey little kitty. What am I gonna tell Chris? He won't find out. The heck he won't. That Janeway's a critic. He writes for the newspaper. Ah, you're just nervous. The old guy who sold him doesn't know me from Adam. Hey, give me that drink. I can use it. We're looking for a man, and I'm afraid I don't know his oh, name. Oh. oh, and I'm afraid I can't help you. Oh, look! Why did you run away from me like that, huh? Here, fifty dollars? I don't know what you're talking about. But the pictures you brought me. My name is Janeway. This is Mr. Delaro. How do you do? What is it you want? We'd like to find out who painted the pictures. Why'd you buy those pictures if you don't know who painted them? Because they're good. Who painted them? <laughs> Why don't you just tell them, Johnny? That's why I made out like I didn't know. <laughs> Doesn't even put her name on her pictures. You're an extraordinary artist, Miss Martin. Oh, no. I don't get it. Why is he lying? There's no reason to lie. You've been around the old boy long enough to pick up his lingo. Feed Janeway some of that. I'll get him in here along with you. No, no, wait! Ever since she was a kid, Mr. Janeway. Never went to art school, did she? No, she just picked it up. I guess I'm the only one who's been encouraging her, kind of. I wonder if Miss March would let me have all of these. Well, that depends. Uh... The one thing that I absolutely, ca a trope that I cannot in a movie ever is mistaken identity. And I think it's because it's, an, it's like irrational fear. I absolutely cannot do it. Your work is not only original, but has a masculine force. How long does it take you to paint a picture? She's gonna forget. Sometimes a day, sometimes a year. It's like, like falling in love, I guess. Oh my God, what a She's using his words. Every painting, if it's any good, is a love affair. Oh, I hope she ends up with nothing. And I hope Johnny ends up in freaking jail. Don't write about me. I think I'm breaking the ice. Kitty, Mr. Delaro wants to handle all your work exclusively. Is it all right? How about 12 o'clock? And then lunch afterward with me. She'll be there. <laughs> I'm glad you're around, Mr. Prince, to make up her mind for us. Uh, We'd better go. Until tomorrow. Thanks, Mr. Janeway. So long. And also, these men are, like, like legit. Like, they legit like the painting. Like, it just makes me so freaking enraged. I, I cannot. I'm so freaking upset. Catherine mm -hmm. March. Kitty! For cat's sake. Yes. Put that one back. Kitty! Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mr. Cross. See, I hope you don't mind my looking at your picture. Fine work, that. Remarkable painting. I don't like him. Oh, Johnny's all right. He's a nice fellow, Chris. Really is. I don't know why you don't like him. Hey, Kitty, don't be angry. Why do you come here if you want to quarrel? I didn't ask you to come here. Do you want me to go? 
I want you to stay here and paint. I'm sorry, Chris, but why do you torment me about something that's over and done with? Well, because I... Would you marry me? Of course I'd marry you if you were free, but you're not, so let's not talk about it. Now you go on and paint. Paint me, Chris. Oh, her toenails? <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's, at this point, that is all that I'm feeling right now. Oh, and she knows. She's like, oh, those dreadful paintings. Oh, Hello, God. Adele. I dropped over at the butcher shop like you told me to. I got a nice piece of liver. How long have you known Catherine March? He raises the I don't hand. know what you're talking about. How oh, my God, in the camera. Her? That was cool. Get away with that knife. Do you want to cut my throat? He's like, yes. <laughs> You've been copying her work for years. Copying? Pretending you painted those pictures out of your own head and all the time you were just copying the work of a real artist. Hold on a second. The fact that she doesn't think that those are actually his works of art, that he's copying, infuriates me. Clearly you don't love your husband. Why did you guys get married? Like, what is that about? Where? You know where. Delarose Art Gallery on 57th Street. They've got a window full of paintings by Catherine Ma. She gets $500 for a single picture. Do any more painting around here? I swear I'll write that woman a letter telling her you're stealing her ideas. Why did you agree to marry her? She's horrendous. She is a horrendous person. God, talk about, un this man is just unhappy. Baby's gonna have a big diamond ring and a shiny limousine. <sighs> How, How did my pictures get into Della Rose's window? Yeah, Kitty. How'd that happen, Kitty? Don't be angry with me. Be angry. No, I'm not angry. I just can't understand. Forgive me, darling. I, I needed money. Oh, I know I shouldn't have put my name on him, but <laughs> Mr. Delaro wanted to know who painted him, and I, I just couldn't give him your name. If I'd brought those pictures to a man like Delaro, he wouldn't have taken them. Do you think she's a woman? They say I am. <laughs> well, they're going to keep on saying it. Well, that gives me a little authority around here. I want to paint your picture, Kitty. How about it? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so upset. Luckily though, the technical aspect of this film is very beautiful. Watching it is very beautiful because the story's pissing me off. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Self-poetry. That was him and the umbrella. That, I saw that. I saw a picture of that when I was researching. It's beautiful. And the the crazy thing is, is the women that are in the paintings look eerily similar to the cover of Metropolis. So I don't know if it's like Fritz Lang who's painting these or like his people, but it is eerily similar to the Metropolis woman. Hello, Damon. Hello there. Hello. Well, this is the first time I've ever agreed with you, Jane Way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mona Lisa without the smile. Something hidden. How is he just okay with being in the background? Like, I don't understand that. It's so infuriating to me. I would be so enraged. Of course, the man outside says he wants to see you. Who? I ain't get no name, sir. But he said he was a detective. When is karma gonna kick in? I'm waiting for it. I'm just waiting for it. You the detective? Well, I used to be, Mr. Cross. Don't you recognize me? No. No. <laughs> Quite a shock, huh? And I'll oh. faint, Mr. Cross. Oh, that... Well, I was in trouble at the time. I... That's the husband. Homer. One night I'm down by Brooklyn Bridge Crooked trying to cop. fix things up. Man runs in the speakeasy and says, woman just jumped off the bridge. Jump in. Away I thought, I'm hoping I don't come up again. This is interesting. I didn't expect him to come back from the dead. I looked down my hand. What do you think I got? A scratch? A pocketbook. That's what I grabbed a hold of when I thought it was her hat. And inside is $2,700 in folded money. Well, the coal barge unloaded on a banana boat bound for Honduras. Well, I went with it. Yeah, but Honduras. if you're not dead, then I'm not really married to Adele, am I? What's it worth to you for me to keep my mouth shut and just... Uh, stay dead? Fade away? <laughs> the fact that he wants to stay dead instead of come back? You're a cashier. It ought to be easy for you to put your hands on a couple of thousand. He's asking him to steal money for him? What? You're going back to her? No. But not to do you a favor, mister. He's like, no, Don't please think take you're going to get any peace of mind either. She'd kick you out in a minute for a man like me. 
I'll, I'll get you some money. Now you're using your head. He stole all that. Only two hundred. <laughs> well, that's all I could get. She's your wife, well, brother. I, I want you to get all that's coming to you, Mr. Higgins. Now, what about the insurance money? Insurance? Yeah. $2,000. Adele collected it. It's really yours, isn't it? She keeps it right in her bedroom. So. If you took it, it would be perfectly legal. This is the night that she always goes out to the movies. You take the money, I let you out. He's setting him up. And also, I love that, like, Homer or the husband is like, like, if she sees me, like, you're cooked. As if Chris wants to stay married to Adele. Where's the money? He looks so different than his picture. Like he's just the shell of, of his old self. Please, <laughs> he's like, bye. He's about to realize the cold, hard truth. Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Lazy legs. Jeepers, I love you. Okay. Now you see the truth. Chris? He better have some redemption at the end of this. Chris! No! Push you over on your head. How'd I know he was coming here tonight? Well, I told you to watch your step, didn't I? That's right. Blame it on me. Oh, why'd you keep me here tonight? I didn't want to stay. Johnny! Then leave. That's the only thing you ever understood. I'm through with you. Do not come back. It's it's my name that's getting us money, so you kindly can leave. <laughs> Millie? Yeah, Kitty. You seen Johnny? Listen, he can't live without me any more than I can live without him. Said he was coming back here. They deserve each other. To beat me up? Oh, you don't have to warn me. That's just the way he talks. <laughs> That's love, honey. Oh, Come amazing. on, Johnny. I heard you. Oh, it's Chris. She didn't even care about him. She's too busy looking for her deadbeat boyfriend. You lied to me, Kitty. It was him, wasn't it? Can mm -hmm. I help it if I'm in love? You couldn't love a man like that, Kitty. He's evil. Why'd you come here? To ask you to marry me. What about your wife? Chris. No wife. Let's For cat's sake, you husband turned up. I'm free. She doesn't want to marry you, brother. Oh, now. Don't cry, Kitty. I can marry you now. I, I want you to be my wife. You can forget this other man. <laughs> I'm not crying, you fool. I'm laughing. Oh, you idiot. How can a man be so dumb? You! Get out of here! Get out! Chris! Chris, get away from me! Chris, He's gonna stab Chris. her. Oh! And they show it! Oh my god! Visceral! I was not expecting that. Look out, Johnny. You kill somebody. I'm sorry, Chris, but take out Johnny next. Shh! I didn't say that. I did. Take him out. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You gotta escape somehow, brother. Good job. Is that the end? What happens next? Ice pick murder in Greenwich Village. Famous painter slain. Okay. If he could just get his conscience together. All he has to do is get his conscience together. Just get your conscience together, bro. Chris. Oh my God. I'm, I'm not trying to condone murder. Murder is not... Don't go out and commit murder because don't do it. It's not good. However, in the context of the film, okay? Which is all fictitious and fake. I just, he, he can have a happy ending, you know? He just has to get his conscience together. Hold on, Chris, wait a minute. Yeah, please. What made you do it, Chris? I checked the cash before you came in. Oh, he got hit you know how much cash. is missing? I just can't do it. But, Mr. Hogarth, I know you've done your duty and I'm obliged to you. He's not even worried about the freaking, he's not even worried about the money at this point, bro. Chris, it was a woman, wasn't it? It sure was. I thought so. Eddie G? He's acting his butt off right now. Oh my god, his conscience is gonna get him. Well, I didn't do anything. I'm on a lo I'm on a lawyer. Riverside Drive. He tried to get away in the murdered girl's car. That was my car. His $140 was taken out of her pocketbook. It was mine. It's got your fingerprints on it. Well, naturally, I picked it up. How did I know she was dead? I thought she was asleep at first. Cross isn't as dumb as he looks. He paid it up. The accused brought me two pictures. He told me Miss March painted them. Oh my god, he fell into his own trap. <laughs> she was a very great artist. She told me she was an artist when she rented the studio. He was with her. Yeah, he was mean when he was drunk. 
And then I heard her say hello Johnny before she hung up. He was there all right. Mm-hmm. That was one of her peculiar traits. She never let anyone see her paint. There's no question. Mr. Cross paint? <laughs> he only copied her work. Uh, my wife, uh, I mean my former wife is correct. I really can't paint. My copies were so bad I had to destroy them. For cat's sake, he's lying. Oh no, I sound like a horrible person, guys. I promise you I am not condoning murder. Do not go out and murder someone, please. Please do not take this as like a, oh, now it's okay. It's not okay. Don't go murder someone. Like I said, in the context of the film, it makes sense. We're talking about in the context of the film, not in real life. Don't commit murder, please. Uh, Joe Williams, Morning World. Yeah. Conway's with a legend. Yeah. Uh, nobody cooked Johnny's goose except Johnny. Hmm. He shot off his mouth. He was a dead pigeon when he dragged the girl's name through the mud. Got a fair trial, didn't he? Yeah, but there's always a doubt. That someone is getting away with murder. Not me. There's no such thing. I figure we have a little courtroom right in here. Judge, jury, and executioner. Oh, he's talking about the conscience. Well, murder never solves anything. The problem just moves in here where it can never get out. Oh, my God, right don't see that. Solitary. So you go right on punishing yourself. It's you true, though. You can't get away with it. The guilty, the guilt would destroy. I'd rather have the judge give me the words than have to do it to myself. Then that's probably his punishment, that he has to live with the guilt for the rest of his life. I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't do it. Won't anybody believe me? Give me a break, somebody! I never had a square deal in my life! Or somebody, oh. somebody give me a break! I feel bad for him, but then I remember the way he treated her and the way he was just sort of a sleaze bomb, and I'm like, eh. He didn't kill her, though. I, you know, he is innocent. Of murder, at least. What is it? Oh, John, oh, John. Lazy legs. I'm here, baby. I'm here, baby. Jeepers, I love you, John. Oh, this is creepy. This is properly creepy. He's gonna unalive himself. Oh, he has to live with that guilt. Okay, the, living with the guilt would be really difficult. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my god, it's Oh, you idiot. I'm gonna pay me so dumb. You were innocent. You were pure. That's what he killed in you. He's a murderer. No, he's not. Not Johnny. See, Chris. That's why you had to oh, die. God, he sounds creepy. You're the one I killed. <laughs> he'd break every bone Gee. in your body. He's a bad Johnny. Johnny. Oh, that's his oh, life. Johnny. Johnny. There's something wrong with it. <gasps> he flew out the window. Oh, wow. Oh, God. That's that's a rough way to go, man. Is he alive? He's still alive? Oh, no. He can't, he can't end it even if he wanted to. Wait a second. Was this released in the U.S.? Like, this is a United States film, right? It had to have been. Because a lot of the things that they're showing doesn't feel like it matches the code. I need to read more up on my code. But, yeah. Very dark themes that are just allowed to show. Okay, I'm here for it. Oh, it's you. Haven't I told you to keep out of this park? You know the mayor's orders. Oh, he's homeless now. Who's that, Rick? Oh, he's got a crazy idea. He killed a couple of people five or six years ago. Can't now get they it won't off believe him. Always trying to give himself up. He's not looking too good. He looks like he aged like 50 million years. Oh my god. It's driving me crazy now. Universal release. So it's universal. I felt like for the first half, for the first act of the film, I just was so upset with so many things story-wise we'll leave the technicalities for a second but for story-wise there were so many things that i was just like boom after boom after boom like kitty is taking advantage of chris and then johnny is like 
really a deadbeat and just like abusing Kitty, but Kitty still loves him. Like it's just that just really upset me. Not to mention the mistaken identity of her being the artist when it really was Chris. That for me was just so un deeply unsettling. And then in the second act when it's like, okay, now there's this possibility that like Johnny could be framed for Kitty's murder. I'm like, okay, we have a little, a little upside. Not again, that you should commit murder. Don't go do that. Like I said, like four times already, but it was just the context of it. It's like, you want the bad guys to be brought to justice. And in a way they were, but unfortunately it ended with, you know, Chris kind of losing his mind and living with the guilt of kidding, killing Kitty and then causing the death of Johnny. Um, which then at the end there, they were like, well, now we're together forever and you're still stupid, right? Like that's just him making his up and it's all up in his mind, but still there's just a deeply unsettling feeling about the story of this film. So from that, I feel like, that was an emotional roller coaster, but I mean the technicality of the film, the technicals of the film, like the camera work was so smooth. It was such a pleasure to watch. Um, and then the moments where Fritz Long, he like he framed certain certain scenes, you know, when when Chris was crossing his fingers, or when there were like there were like pan, quick pans, or specifically during the the court scene when all of the witnesses that were being on the witness stand were like single. It was a single chair and them speaking. I think that that the simplicity of that was beautiful. Um, so the art, the, 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 the art within this film was beautiful. And, and then specifically the art, like the actual art where he painted, like the paintings were really beautiful too. And they had an eerily similar vibe to Metropolis, which I thought was really strange. Um, I definitely want to look more into that and see who actually painted those. But the story, I just, I'm going to be honest, it was a little unsatisfying. It was an unsatisfying story. And I can see why people were kind of left the audience, I mean, left the the theater and were just kind of like, what? Like just sort of a neutral feeling. Because there was some like karma or redemption that you felt, but it was sort of thrown out by the fact that he like didn't live a normal life after Chris didn't live a normal life after. And like, he just had to live with his guilt for the rest of his life. You clearly saw that he tried to like end it. That didn't work. He tried to like turn himself in. Nobody believed him. So he was just left dealing with, with the, the guilt. And that's the unsettling part about it. Like, I wish he would have just sort of like gotten his mentals together. I know like obviously murdering someone does something to your psyche. But again, this is fiction. This is a movie. This is not real. And anything can happen in a movie. So I wish he could have just gotten it like together and just kind of like lived a normal life. But, you know, whatever. Maybe the code had something to do with that where he had to be punished. Or maybe that's just the way they wrote it. It was deeply unsatisfying. I am sorry if I upset anyone by saying that. But the technical aspect of this film was absolutely stunning. And it made up a little bit for the story. Thank you so much for watching it with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to become an official MWMer, then please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in the loop. If you would like to see this film's full reaction, you will find it on my Patreon. Patreon is also where I hold my MWM live watch parties, where we come together and we watch one classic film live via Zoom. If that sounds of any interest to you, then please check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. In the next video, we are going to be continuing our November series with the film Sweet Smell of Success, courtesy of my patrons. I have never heard of The Sweet Smell of Success, but I do know that it stars Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis, which is going to be a very interesting mix, and I cannot wait to watch it. If you have not seen Sweet Smell of Success, please watch it fully in its entirety by by yourself, with your friends, with your family, however you want to do it, and then come back and watch the reaction. I have also provided a link of where I bought my physical copy of the film and where you can stream it online. Both are down in the description box. If you have a recommendation for any classic Hollywood film, the best way to get a hold of me is on social media, on Facebook and X at Movies with Mia, and on Instagram and TikTok at Movies with Mia underscore. If social media is not your jam, fear not. I do have an email. My email is right here.
and it's also in the description box below. And while you're online in general, why not consider checking out my Letterboxd account? There I have a documentation of all of the films we've seen on the channel. If you want to check that out, it's under the handle at Mamma Mia Tiffany. And with all of that, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you have a fantastic day. It is definitely colder, so wear your jackets, take your vitamins, take your necessary medication. Do not get sick. Let's make it to 2025. And with that, I'll see you, boo, in the next video. Bye, everybody. Whenever I get on camera, it's like been like months for me, not months, like a month, a month and a half. And so I have to readjust to the idea of being seen even though I'm talking to a camera. I'm really talking to all of you who are watching me. And that I have to readjust to. <laughs> I'm just gonna go, we're gonna jump in. Mia is rocking her straight hair today. I've been rocking straight hair for about a month now. And I'm very much missing my curls. So we might have to go back to curly girl Mia. So thank you so much for your continued support of the channel. <laughs> Again. And if you're interested in exclusive MWM content, then please, I'm gonna try that again because I feel like I messed up on exclusive. Ooh, it went off. <gasps> the laundry went off. Hopefully it's not too bad. Scarlet Street was based off of the one act play, a French play that is French and a play. <laughs> in the next film, we, not film, not film. It's a video, not a film. Boom, 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 in and out. Okay, sorry, I just got excited. <laughs> sorry, that was good. That was very good, that was like quick. I don't know if there's gonna be any bloopers for this one.